Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be walking you guys through how I studied for my Praxis test. I am in my senior year of college and I'm getting certified in elementary education in the state of Tennessee. And so I specifically had to take the 5203 test, which is teaching reading elementary education. And then I had to take, oh, there's a hair in my mouth. And then I had to take the 5001 test, which is the multiple subjects test, which is different than the core test. Um, but it tests, it's four different subjects. It's reading or language arts, social studies, math, and then science. So yeah, as COVID has affected everything, it has impacted how I take these tests as well. So I actually got to do these tests at home online and I can talk about that process a little bit too. Um, but I didn't have to go to a testing center. I could take them online. And so I took the 5203 test, the teaching reading test, um, on the 31st of July, which is a couple weeks ago. And then I took the multiple subjects test last or this past Friday, which was the 7th of August. And I didn't want to take them both on the same day because that'd be terrible. And I kind of planned it towards the very end of the summer. I have this week um, right now to pack and get ready to go back to Nashville. And so I didn't want to be studying during that same time. And I also didn't want to be taking the test during school. And there's just a lot of pros and cons to taking it during school. One being um, that you're in school, so you're learning that content right then. But two, you can't specifically study as much for the test. So I decided to take it this summer so I could get it out of the way before the school year started. And yeah, so I'm going to try and make this video a little shorter. I know I'm long-winded and all my videos have been like almost at least 20 minutes. I'm hoping that this one is not as long because I'm not sure who will want to watch me talk about studying for 20 minutes. Um, but that being said, I'm going to try and make it short and sweet and to the point, but forgive me if I do not. Um, and I would also like to preface by, I'm not going to get anywhere with prefacing everything, but I would also like to preface that um, this just worked for me. It depends on where your skill set is and where you think you need the most help in studying. Obviously, you have to um, kind of make your own personalized plan, but this is what worked for me, and I had to keep on changing it as I was going. But we're going to go ahead and start with the teaching, reading, elementary education praxis test, which is the 5203. Um, I haven't got my scores back for that because there is constructed a constructed response questions, which means you have to write out. It's not multiple choice. People have to grade those. So I should be getting those results in in a few weeks. So maybe skip this part if you don't trust that I'm going to pass and don't trust my studying skills for this one. But I mainly use, so, oh goodness. So I based my studying off of the study companion and the study plan that the Praxis website actually provides for you. And I kind of went off of that. I read through this. The first thing I did was read through the study companion on what I was being tested on, the different components. I took the practice test, which is only like 20 questions or so, but just to gauge where I was at. And so I could take it at the end before my next test, see if I made any kind of growth. And then um, after I read through the study companion, and I did this along like a few months ago, so I might be missing a few things, but I read through the study companion first and I did the study plan. On the study plan, it has it split up into the sections of the test and it has the standards, or I'm not sure, or objectives that you'll be tested on. And it has a spot for how well you know the content, what resources you have or need, where you can find those resources, the dates you want to study the content by, and then the date you actually completed. I will say that I was behind the whole way through, um, but I got it done and got through all the content. And the main thing I used for this test was the Mometrics test prep, which was through my school's library. If it's not, if you don't have access to that through a library, you would have to purchase that. But I used that and that was super helpful. It was a little difficult to read through because it wasn't laid out in the same like timeline as the objectives and some things that were supposed to be in one section were at the very beginning when it was supposed to be at the end. And so I really had to sift through that information and pull out what was important and um, kind of supplement what I couldn't find there with different notes from my classes and also sometimes Google. I'm um, just doing a simple search for just the basic information. 
but mainly I use the Mimetrix test prep. And so as I was reading through that Mimetrix test prep, I had the standards copied and pasted into OneNote and then I took notes under each standard. And then that way I could, instead of just reading through, when I had those notes, not only could I go back and look on those after I was done reading through the study guide before the test, like the week before the test, I could also see clearly what I still needed to get information on because like I said, it didn't cover all of the objectives. And so yeah, I used OneNote and I have a notebook called Praxis Test. And then I have a folder called, um, folder for 5203 and then a folder for 5001. And then I have pages for the different sections. So there's assessment and diagnostic teaching reading, that's one page and all of the um, information for that one is on that page. And then the second and the third one as well have their separate pages. And that was super helpful because I could see what information I was missing, like I said. And I even put in extra notes of things that didn't specifically say were going to be tested, but I thought were important to know for the test or just in general, I didn't want to forget. And yeah, that was super helpful. I think it helped me on that test. Obviously, I don't know my scores yet, but I feel pretty good about it. I don't want to jinx myself. But hopefully, I passed that test and that one was super simple it didn't feel simple while i was studying because like i said i did have to pull from it a lot of different resources but that was basically what i did so there's not much with that test now the second test that i just took this past friday was a beast of a test i think it took it's allotted for about four and a half hours um for all four tests so this test is a little different. Um, I mean, it's a lot different. It's a completely different test, but I started the same with a st study companion, reading through that. And then some things I skimmed because I had already read the same information in the other study companion, but I used that. I took the praxis, the practice praxis test um, before I even started studying. And then I kind of created a study plan for each of the subjects, which is included with the Praxis um, materials that they give you for free. And then they also give you study resources for this test. And so it's just a long page of links to different videos, mainly on Khan Academy, or I think almost exclusively based on Khan Academy. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go through each subject because I ended up doing each one a little differently. So we'll start with reading. So I made the study plan for reading. I'm not gonna go through like the dates because I did not follow the dates at all. And so I would advise anyone that's going to take this test to be um, flexible and to show grace to yourself or give grace to yourself whenever you don't meet like a studying deadline, but just continually work and chip away at it and you will get it done. I didn't think I was gonna get through all the um, different topics, but I did. For the reading one, for the reading and language arts test, I did go through the study guide and I watched, I think, every video and some of them had um, like big long articles and then a little practice question or a few practice questions at the end. And a lot of them, I would just take the do the little practice questions. And then once I, um, once I answered it right, I was like, okay, I know this skill. I don't need to watch the video or learn about it. And so that was super easy to get through those. And then some of the other ones I did watch the videos, for example, like, um, just the grammar ones, um, shifts in verb tense and subject verb agreement and concision and other things that have proper names for them that I might not recognize. So I did go through the videos and then for the first three, I think I already said this, but I might cut it out. The first three lessons don't have study resources for them. And so I... Um, use my metric study guide and I did take notes on that because um, it was a lot of phonics and phonological awareness and fluency and very specific things that um, I really need to pay attention to and learn for myself not just for the test so I took notes on that but other than that yeah I went through the videos and took those questions and just moved on the reading was super simple and then I went on kind of a Khan Academy trail and it said click here for your praxis blah 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 and it had this whole thing where you took a full practice test and then it curated you said um, it told you where you would have placed 
like what score you would have made on that test. And then it gives you a chance to set a goal score and then it tells you all these lessons and stuff that you need to do to reach that goal score. And I did this for reading and for math. And then I took like, I took all the practice tests and then I realized it was for the core test. And while some of those same skills were probably helpful, I was really sad that it wasn't for this specific test. So if you do see that on Khan Academy, it is for the core test, which is different than the Praxis Elementary Education like 5001 test. So just letting you know, those are different. It might still be helpful, but I did waste quite a bit of time preparing for the wrong test. I will tell you that. So that is it for the reading. Pretty straightforward and easy. The math was a little different because math, I feel like you really need to practice math and not just watch videos. And I did start by watching the videos on the math and they were helpful. I did start um, by watching the videos on the math, but I did not finish all the videos. It That core practice, praxis um, series popped up and I clicked on that. And I do feel like that was helpful just to get in the right math mindset and to remind myself and refresh myself refresh um, different math concepts. So I do feel like that core part was helpful. Uh, I did prepare for the math a lot because I just took a math, or actually a couple math courses the past two semesters. And I feel like that really helped um, prepare me for this test. But I did do a lot on Khan Academy, um, just practicing different math problems and taking the practice test, even though it was for the core. And that's about it for math. I chose to talk to you about those two things first because um, those were like the easier ones and I felt more comfortable. As for social studies and science, I was stressing out, let me tell you. I'll start with science. Um, I'm going to pull up the study resources. So, for science, I clicked on every single one of these videos and I watched every painful minute of them. And I will say I, um, did multitask and I know that's not the best but some things especially like plate tectonics and a lot of the earth science things I kind of just had in the background of me just playing on my phone because I just I did just take earth science the past this past semester so I felt like I knew the general information about that and even when I got into life science I mean I started as a biology major so I feel like I had even though it was freshman year a few years ago I feel like I had a pretty good grasp on but I did sit through every painful minute of these videos and they were painful. A little tip I would say to, I'll show you on the screen, but a little tip is to go on the little settings um, icon on the Khan Academy videos and speed up the video. And I only did this about halfway through. I realized I could do this, but speed up the video to about 1.25, 1.5. You can get through those videos a little bit faster and it makes the world a difference because they are a bit painful to watch. They're just so long and there's so many and you feel like you're never going to get through them. But most of them do take you to the exact video and not a whole lesson. Um, so that is really good. And I didn't think I would finish it, but I did. I got through it. I might've been coloring in the background, and not paying attention, but I feel like, you know, the information kind of stuck in there. Um, so. That was helpful. And that's pretty much what I did. I didn't use any other extra study guides. Um, I kind of just reviewed the videos. And then the last subject, social studies. I knew that I had to study my little butt off for this social studies part because I have never been good at social studies. I've always loved math and science out of all the subjects and I've always excelled at reading, even though it wasn't my favorite. Like I said, I did a lot better at reading. Social studies, I don't know. I just feel like social studies hasn't been a strong focus in schools and it should be. Um, and I feel like I just, it just hasn't stuck with me through the years. All the times and dates and names and very specific things. I'm more of like a concept, like figure out comprehension, like I'm just throwing out random words, but I'm more of like a figure out and work through something kind of person and not just here's a fact, memorize it. And so I knew that I had to pay attention to these videos. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to watch these videos. And a part of me not scheduling the study plan right was me not knowing how in depth each link, each 
link went to. Um, I will pull it up on the screen, but you click on like one standard under one of the sections. I'm not sure if they're called standards, but that's what I'm calling them. You click on one section or one lesson and it'll have, it could have anywhere from like two to three to like 10 or 15 links to Khan Academy. And then you click on one of those links and it takes you to a whole lesson. It's not just one video, it's a whole lesson with videos and questions, practice questions and study guides and like articles. And it's a lot, and I was not accounting for that when I was making my study plan. So just know that the social studies study guide is a lot, which is good because you get, I mean, all the history from millions of years ago to now, but it is a lot. And so I started out just going through each video and reading each study guide article and taking, like completing the whole lesson on each link. And about midway through, I realized I was never going to get through it and I was going to kill myself trying. So I, if it, the lesson had a video and like a study guide, if it had both for one topic, I would kind of skip around and the study guides I feel like were easier for me to process because I was actually reading it and I wasn't just passively listening to a video. And so if I had a study guide and video, I wouldn't watch the video and I would do the study guide and I kind of fell out like, okay, this seems repetitive. I don't need to watch the video or three videos about this one thing. I just need the general idea of what was happening at that time period. Um, I will say I got through all the videos or all through all the lessons, but I did have to um, kind of personalize and be like, okay, I've watched five videos on World War II. I think I'm good. I know the general idea. I can make educated guesses and that's exactly what I did on the test. And so, yeah, I would just be prepared if you're going to use um, the study resources that they give you. Just be prepared that social studies is a beast and it's going to take you a very long time if you click on each link. So yeah, that is how I studied for the test and I am happy to say that I did pass all the subjects for the 5001 test, the multiple subjects test, pass reading, science, math, and social studies. Thank goodness, social studies, I'll be honest, I do not know how I passed it. I really don't. I felt like I made an educated guess on each and every question, but I passed it. I'm so excited that it's done for the school year. And yeah, that's how I studied without um, paying for anything. You do have the option to pay for a practice test through um, the Praxis website. Um, and you do have the option like to pay for like just different study guides. But I didn't have to pay for any of my study materials. The test is expensive as it is. And so I was planning if I failed one of the subjects and had to retake something, I was planning to spend money on studying for it. But I wanted to go the first round through without spending more money because tests are expensive, like I said. And so I can happily say I passed the test without spending any, more, any money um, other than just paying for the test. But I studied... On, the day, on my days off, I tried to study like four or five hours a day. And so just know this did not come easy. I think I would have passed the reading without studying um, and maybe the math, maybe the science, but the social studies, if I did not study like I did, I don't think I would have passed. And so just know it didn't come easy for, for me. So if you don't pass the first time, um, you might just have to study or if you're about to take it, I would really suggest studying as much as you can because yeah, it wasn't fun, but it paid off because I don't have to pay more to take a test. So that is how I studied for my Praxis test. Just a few tips if you are planning on, the taking, on taking it at home. Um, I didn't know this before. I only knew it because I took um, the test before the, another test before the multiple subjects test. But you can't just have scratch paper because they don't want to risk the information getting out or the answers getting out from the test. And so you can't just have scratch paper. You have to have a whiteboard or paper inside one of these, um, or I guess you could even have it laminated, but one of these sheet protectors. And so I was able, I went to Target and picked up some markers and a sheet protector for um, the math portion. So be prepared to need one of these or a whiteboard because you cannot write on just paper and they ask you to like clear it off before. And then another thing is you'll read that wasn't in any of the documents or like 
planning for your at-home test. I didn't see that information anywhere. The other things that I'm going to say are, but just remember that you can't have anyone in the room. Um, I took them at my church and I went into an office because there were people coming in and out. And so you can't have anyone in the room or around you. So if you're planning to take at home or in a dorm room, you have to make sure that no one's going to be coming in. And you don't want that anyways, because it will stress you out when people are, um, around and stuff but you will have someone watching you you won't see their face and so it's not that bad because you don't see them watching you um but someone will be watching you take your test and making sure that you're not cheating or trying to cheat because it would be very hard um they really take the proper precautions so that no one cheats um but yeah you'll be having someone watch you and going they'll go through your computer settings and kind of adjust some things um just to make sure that no one is taking advantage of other resources that they shouldn't be. And for the math portion, you can't have a separate calculator. The calculator is on the computer and you can actually practice with it. You just have to request it, it doesn't cost anything. And I would suggest doing that because it's a little different than a regular one. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. I feel like I kind of just rambled and forgot everything that I was going to say. Um, and maybe it's super obvious how you should study for the test because they kind of lay out for you. But that's how I studied for the Praxis test for the ones you have to take in Tennessee. So like I said, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions about the Praxis test, obviously not the content. I don't want to get my test revoked or anything. Um, but if you have any questions about um, just the process of the test or any questions about study tips for those specific tests, um, I would be happy to answer those in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video and I'm so excited. This is like one of my first teaching videos and this is what I really want this channel to be about. And so I know my family and friends on Facebook and Instagram that watch this just to support me. This video is probably really boring if you made it all the way through. Thank you because I know you're not going to be taking Praxis tests, but hopefully someone will come across this and it will be helpful. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more teaching videos in the future. And I will see you guys next Thursday. Bye! Hi, I'm all over the place. Probably because of my coffee.